presentation submissions. Um, there are loads and loads of websites, believe it or not, will, that will quite happily allow you to submit presentations in PowerPoint or PDF format. So SlideServe is probably a good example of, uh, of this. And uh, the idea is that it's a bit, a bit like YouTube in many ways, um, but it uses presentations rather than videos. And the idea is that you can um, create presentations, upload them the same way you would to YouTube. The nice thing is that your presentation, uh, once it's uploaded, it can be found and indexed by Google within hours, you know, certainly within days, um, because uh, a lot of these, um, or the good ones anyway, a lot of the presentation submission websites have a very high page rank, and basically Google is constantly trawling them for new material. So as you can see in this example here, we have, uh, we've done a search for something in Google and it's um, gone it, to um, slideserve.com and ba basically it's uh, showing at one of our directories here, one of our presentations here. The one above it is um, powershow.com and the one below it is our actual, uh, one of our main websites. So you can see in the search, in the search results here, we've got one listing for our website and we've got two listings for presentations which are actually hosted on uh, these um, presentation submission sites. So definitely worth doing. Um, many of them will have uh, a follow policy, some will have a no follow policy. Again, investigate that, but even if they're no follow, it's still worth um, having these in there because as you can see, the results will be indexed quite nicely within Google. SlideShare is just another example and as you can see in this example here, we've got uh, some search engine results. We've searched for um, SEO Training June Lab, and it, this result has showed up. But the important thing is it showed up and it's logged as three hours ago. So basically within three hours of submitting the presentation to one of these sites, it not only got indexed by Google, it was showing up in the search results within Google, which is pretty impressive and basically illustrates why it's worth doing. Um, SlideShare is, uh, as I say, another example here. There's, uh, there's loads of these. If you go and start searching for them, you'll find that um, there's many that are available. These are some well-known examples. You've got SlideShare.net, uh, AuthorStream.com, um, SlideRoll.com, um, PowerShare.com, SlideServer. They're all variations on the theme. They all work in more or less the same sort of way. Um, but the point is that um, a lot of these tend to have very, very high page rank and they're indexed extremely fast by Google. Now links from YouTube. Um, basically you should create um, a reasonable number of uh, YouTube videos, get them uploaded there and um, make sure that uh, when you're uploading the uh, information to YouTube that you specify all the required information, so things like the title, the description, the keyword tags and so on and so forth. Exactly the same way as you would with the website. Something that a lot of people mix, uh, miss out on or, or don't do well is the fact that uh, within the description within uh, YouTube you can put a clickable link back to your own website. What I mean by this is if we actually fire up YouTube, I'll just uh, pause this, it doesn't actually run. Right, in this particular case we're, uh, we've fired up a, a, a video within YouTube and as you can see, in the description area underneath here, I have a clickable link. Uh, a lot of people either put no links in, or the vast majority uh, just put a link that starts with www. then the rest of the URL. But if you type in the full URL, which is um, http colon forward slash forward slash etc. As you can see here, if I click on this, it fires up the website. So that's the, uh, the value of putting a a link into the description within your YouTube description and using the entire complete URL to your website is basically clickable and linkable back to your um, your own website then. It's still got no follow tag on it from uh, YouTube unfortunately but uh, as I say you have got have got the clickable link. The um, the value of um, putting uh, YouTube videos uh, up, up, the, up on the site is that when you search YouTube itself, obviously you're going to find, or hopefully you're going to find your videos. But the nice thing is when you search through the search engines, for instance, when you do a search within uh, Google, you'll find that as well as your website results showing up, in many cases, if you've got um, good, well-placed um, videos on, on uh, YouTube, these will be displayed as well. 
So you can see in this example in the search engines here, we've searched for SEO training, June Lab or something like that. And as you can see in this uh, top example here, we've got uh, a listing of the web results from the actual website. Down here we've got another website, but these um, ones here, these are actually um, videos hosted on YouTube. If you go and look at this for real, so in this case I'm doing a search for SEO training June Lab. As you can see, we've got the usual results at the top there, which are, are display ads. These are results um, from websites. And as you can see down here, these ones here, those are actual um, uh, videos showing up in the Google search engine results. If I click on one of these, sure enough, it takes you to um, one of our YouTube videos. Other video submission sites, uh, YouTube is probably the best known, but um, there are many others and a quick search will find these for you. Um, basically, see what's available there, see which ones you like. Check out the homepage and see what the page rank is. If it's got a high page rank, definitely consider using it. So one word of caution, however, don't uh, submit the same video to lots and lots of different sites because this can be treated as duplicate content and say where the duplicate uh, text will be. So Google is getting much better these days at recognizing uh, duplicate pictures, duplicate videos, as well as duplicate text. So just something to be aware of. Right, business associations. Uh, if you've got um, a business association you can join, uh, especially if they've got uh, the ability to um, provide you with uh, a profile page and a link back to your um, particular website. And also if it's got a good page rank um, itself on its home page, then you should definitely consider uh, signing up to these things like the local chamber of commerce possibly or um, local or national industry groups. Um, the more relevant it is to your particular uh, industry, the better. So um, if there's some sort of um, plumbers association, for instance, and you're a plumber and uh, the plumbers association website is well established with a good PR, then it's definitely worth even paying some money to go on these so that you can uh, simply get listed on those, have some information about you and crucially have a decent link back to your particular website. Right, local business meeting groups. Um, there is a, a website called meetup.com. You can uh, fire this up and have a look locally, see what's available. And you'll quite often find there's loads and loads of different business or association groups that you can join. And uh, in many cases, there will be um, a profile page that you can create on their websites. And uh, again, this is an excellent opportunity for basically plugging your particular website, providing you do it in a sensible way. You can have link backs to your website, quite often they're follow links. And uh, it basically means that, um, you know, it's another way of getting quality links possibly back to your particular homepage. Right, take part, taking part in uh, forum discussions. Um, try and do some research, find discussion groups and forums that are relevant to your particular um, industry or your particular product or service. Uh, relevance is all important here. It's not just a question of the more the merrier. Um, again, if you go and look at uh, what Google say, they're looking for quality, they're looking for relevance. So if you've got a discussion group, um, for instance, if you're a plumber in Perth, and there was a discussion group about um, plumbing techniques or advances or, or, or um, you know, so something else of um, specific interest to your, that particular area, then again, this would be worthwhile joining, taking part in, asking questions, un answering questions. Um, in many cases, this will have a no-follow link, but uh, they're always worth investigating because some of them have follow links, some of them have no-follow links. Something else you might want to consider is setting up your own forum. So for instance, um, this uh, website here, mvnforum.com, uh, you can use these to set up a simple forum. Um, in some cases you can do this for free, uh, in other cases there's a small charge. Um, but the advantage of setting up your own forum is basically you have control then, so you can decide um, how it's set up, um, where the link juice goes, and um, it can be quite beneficial and uh, another way of basically diverting both traffic and link juice to your own particular website. Right, blogs. You can post comments to other people's blogs. Um, what you shouldn't do is just seamlessly um, plug your website saying, um, you know, we're good at this for information, blah, blah, blah. Um, the idea with blogs is that um, if you're replying to a blog or commenting on a blog, then if you make the information um, of use and of interest, and uh, so it has genuine value, 
then um, it's much more likely to appear on the blog for one thing because blogs are generally uh, moderated so if you just pl uh, post some sort of shameless plug chances are it'll be deleted by the moderator and never do anything uh, if on the other hand um, the post is genuinely useful uh, chances are it'll be displayed and uh, also you can more than likely get a, uh, a link back to your own, uh, own web page uh, getting links from eBay, you can try listing your products on eBay and uh, link in the product description on the page to um, um, you know, your particular uh, website. Um, do make sure you link back to eBay, it's, uh, I think that's part of their terms and conditions of use. Um, again, in some cases there'll be no follow, um, but again, it's just something you can experiment with. There's more ways of getting links. Right, coupon and discount sites, these are getting increasingly popular both with the general public and also within business. So the basic idea of a coupon site is you can advertise your particular product or service, normally at a vast discount, often 50, 60, 70 percent. So the idea is that um, a lot of people use these and um, you're certainly going to have to offer large discounts, but on the other hand you might find you suddenly attract an awful lot of new customers. Uh, so for instance a while back uh, there was a burger chain in Australia and they offered, um, what was it? They offered discount vouchers that were uh, offering people um, a two dollar meal and apparently they sold over two million or that they um, delivered over two million dollars worth of vouchers within 24 hours which shows you it does work um, but as I say you are going to have to discount heavily really to attract customers on these sort of sites but again it depends on um, what your product and service is if you've got high margins that might be uh, something you might want to consider and it's uh, a certainly a good way of in some cases generating an awful lot of new business Right, automatically tagging copy um, that's um, basically borrowed or stolen from your site. Um, if your website contains lots and lots of interesting authoritative information, sometimes people will link to it. Um, there will be a number of people, however, who will just simply lift the content, um, select it, copy it to the clipboard and paste it onto their own websites. Um, there is this little um, utility, it's called uh, www.ty. Uh, nt.com and basically it's just a little piece of code which you insert into your website and it basically has the effect that uh, when people lift something from your website and paste it into something else there's a little tagline that appears automatically basically saying this code was um, you know originally um, presented in whatever the original website was so it's not going to stop people stealing stuff but it's a way of tagging that uh, information with a piece of code which obviously people can delete if they notice um, but it's just possibly a way of retaining links to you um, even though people have borrowed um, without your permission have borrowed uh, materials from your website so definitely worth thinking about